Last week, we thought about the Christian's relationship to the world. Today, we anchor the believer's life in the past and the future acts of Jesus as we live between our ransom and our reward. Let's hear 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 12 to the end of the chapter. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct, for it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the good news that was announced to you. Peter reminds his hearers that they have been redeemed from the empty way of life inherited from the world. The new life which they enjoy has been bought at an inestimable price. To slip back into that sinful way of life or to choose sin over holiness would show contempt for the price of redemption. As we honor this first outpouring of God's favor, Peter also calls us to set our hope fully on the gift which will be given when Jesus Christ is revealed. Soren Kierkegaard wrote that purity of heart is to will one thing. Peter calls us to such purity as we set our desires wholly on the gift which God has prepared for those who obey his Son. As long as we keep our hearts firmly fixed on God's promised favor, we will no longer conform to the evil desires which marked our life before knowing God. We will reflect God's holiness more and more as we navigate the daily business of living by these two compass points, Jesus' death and coming again. The first calls us to choose holiness out of a deep sense of gratitude, warning us not to value lightly what cost Jesus dearly. The second sets before us our imperishable hope, which we must never compromise for the sake of the short-lived and empty pursuits to which the world around us and our own inclination towards sin would entice us. Holiness seeks concrete expression in deeds of love. As we offer love, service, reconciliation, and compassion, we reflect Christ's own holiness. I would leave you with two reflection questions today based on this passage. The first is, do we so value our redemption and our hope that these two considerations shape our every choice throughout the day, throughout our week. The second would be, how can you today honor God's favor toward you by renouncing some sin and by offering love to one in need?